I wanted to make a video talking about Taysom Hill because I feel like we don't really talk about him that much, you know? We haven't really brought up uh, Taysom Hill and what he's able able to do, uh, the good and the bad, for the Saints. Obviously, he was so talked about when he first kind of entered the league. Or maybe I should just say when he was first you know, used as this sort of, uh, you know, quarterback who would come in and play here and there. But he still has been effective for the Saints, I would say. Like, if you look at his pro football focus grades, and again, it's kind of weird to use any stat to talk about Hill because he really is his own player. There really isn't anyone like him. But, you know, the PFF grades have kind of said that he's still just as good now as he almost ever has been. That first year, they kind of really started using him as the, uh, you know, the quarterback who would come in on specific snaps. That was his career best year, but his second best graded year was last year. Also, if you hear, uh, there's uh, some, it seems like some construction going on in the background. So if you hear like a drill going or something, apologies about that. Usually my microphone's pretty good at uh, picking it up. So uh, you probably, you know, I think there's a good, I would bet you, you're not hearing anything and are just confused as to what I'm saying at all. But uh, figured I will just bring it up in case you do happen to hear it. You don't think there's uh, something going wrong uh, with some, with your computer or something. But yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, you know. Uh, his PFF grades, that's where they're at. Let's get into some film and talk about what he can still do very effectively. First off, let's start off with something like this. And one of the real reasons why having someone like Taysom Hill is so effective is a you know if you want to have a quarterback running play, you don't you don't have to use your actual uh you know you don't have to use. Derek Carr, in this case, coming up next year to be the quarter, you know, to run, you have Taysom Hill do it. But why would you want a quarterback to run instead of just giving the ball to a halfback? Well, because you get an extra blocker that way, right? On this play, there's a halfback on the, you know, a guy who's lined up as a halfback on this play who's going to simply just be blocking. So there, therefore, you can block everybody. I mean, just think about it, you know, logically uh, with football. Of, if there are, you know, 11 guys on, you know, this each side of the field, typically this means that if a, a, run, a quarterback hands the ball off to a running back, there are now uh, nine blockers for 11 defenders. So in this scenario for New Orleans, all they have to do is leave someone on the other side of the field unblocked. They can have a guy accounted for every single one of the other 10 guys, and now you can potentially run and pick up a ton of yards if everyone makes their blocks. And as you see, that's exactly what happens. Everyone does make their blocks. Hill is able to get through the gap, and now he's in a great situation. Of course, a lot of players are eventually going to be able to get over and make a play. So, you know, realistically, how many more yards are you expecting him to get? I don't know, maybe five to 10 more yards, depending on how well this goes. But watch what Taysom Hill then does here. He makes a move, and instead of going down at around the 35-yard line or so, he actually gets inside the 10-yard line. That is the added value of someone like Taysom Hill running this type of play and what makes it so effective. And the fact that he is still capable enough of still being able to throw the football, uh, although not taking that much pressure off, but there's a little bit of pressure because of that, that kind of, you know, allows him to be so effective. Like something like this is another example where, again, it's the same thing of you're blocking everyone but one guy, and that one guy is on the other side of where you're going to run. You're in an end zone situation, and it's just so difficult to stop these plays defensively. I mean, watch how when this play begins, I mean, you're going to see, like, at this point, I mean, look at that window that he has to run through. This is a great situation for Taysom Hill. And, again, you could take this in two different ways. Like, watch, Hill does run through, and he, you know, basically walks in, which he probably shouldn't have done because you wouldn't have had to get hit if you didn't, if you ran. So maybe, I don't know, running at top speed, don't don't get that uh, hit. But anyway, um, you know, again, Taysom Hill kind of seems like the kind of guy who doesn't mind getting uh, hit like that. I don't know. Football players can be... Uh, uh, you know, uh, definitely very tough for sure. But anyway, uh, there's two ways you could take a play like this. On one hand, eh, it was well blocked. I mean, whatever. But on the other hand, part of why this works is because Taysom Hill is a guy who can run with the football well. And because of that, you can now design these plays well, let him be the guy who's there. And that can help set up, you know, times where then you get well-blocked plays. And again, obviously it being Taysom Hill instead of a running back makes it a better blocked play. But like something like this is another good example where it's like, I mean, this just really shows 
how it's kind of unstoppable to uh, you know stop some of these plays where there's a single safety deep here for Seattle. They're playing man coverage across the board. So five guys are going to be covering the five eligible receivers, but you have a player covering over the middle who knows it's Taysom Hill and he knows to try and make sure that he doesn't allow Taysom Hill to run with the football. However, that's where the issue is. I mean, let's just you know use some simple math here. Okay, five guys in coverage. Well, all the routes are going to be guys running away from the middle of the field. So those five, uh, you know, defensive backs are all taken out of the play. You have a single seed to deep. So that guy, you know, if he comes in and stops the run, you're still probably taking that if you're New Orleans. That's still probably going to be an effective play if he's the one who has to make the tackle. Meaning that there are, you know, four defensive linemen and a linebacker left for Taysom Hill to try and figure out a way to get around, you have five offensive linemen. So that's five guys blocking five guys. This is a very good situation. As you see, uh, Hill takes the snap, and those five offensive linemen make their blocks, and that's all that had to happen. They didn't need anything else. You just need five offensive linemen to make their blocks, and you're able to pick up a you know a double-digit yards play, which just means it's like, what do you do? You almost basically have to challenge him to beat you through the air is what you have to do. But even that can be difficult because do you really want to leave someone, you know, do you want to leave Chris Olave one-on-one on the outside, even if it is now Taysom Hill throwing, that's still a dangerous situation. And one more play, you know, again, I'm talking a lot about the sort of why schematically these plays are so effective, but it doesn't always work out. I mean, kind of one of the things I keep having to say is that if everyone makes their blocks, it's going to work out. Well, not everyone is always going to make their blocks, or sometimes a defender is just going to make a good play. I've highlighted a certain uh, defensive lineman on this play because watch what he's going to do. Watch how when his play begins, he kind of bounces off his initial block and gets himself in position to make a tackle, but this is where the real value of Hill comes in, I think. As you see, he's able to get around that tackle, keeps his head forward, and still gets into the end zone for a touchdown because he is capable of making guys miss, of you know not going down easy, and he does a very good job of I'm, kind of being a running back when he has to be, which is kind of what makes these plays just so difficult, is like... Even if you find a way to make a you know guy miss and get in position to make a tackle, you still then have to tackle Taysom Hill. So while Hill doesn't really get the credit, or, you know people don't talk about him as much as they used to. I think maybe some of the novelty of a Taysom Hill has worn off a little bit, and we've kind of seen him. You know they tried him as a starter and it didn't have the best of results. So I think that's also part of why people don't really talk about him as much. But as a guy to just come in and make some you know, plays happen, he's still been a very effective player, I would say. I mean, in fact, this might be a surprise to some people, but his average yards per attempt was a career high last year in 2022. He averaged six uh, yards per rushing attempt, of course, is what I mean, uh, which is still, you know, very uh, effective. And he had a career high in rushing yards as well. He had seven rushing touchdowns, and I feel like no one really talked about it, but we probably should have. Again, I don't know how many people were talking about the Saints last year in general just because they weren't that good. But uh, yeah, Taysom Hill is still a very effective player and means a lot to the offense. He's just a unique uh, player. So yeah, uh, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.